Hello and welcome to part 2 of the Lemongate slash expression events 2 guide. Uh, in this part we'll be going through the syntax and getting your first expression working. We'll be jumping in feet first, then exploring the code later on to see actually what makes it tick. Right, let's get to it. Uh, paste in this code into your editor, which will be on screen now, and we will break it down line by line and see what's going on. After you pasted your code in, click the bar at the bottom and it should turn green and say validated. That means your code should in theory be working fine, paste it and it should work. Paste the code onto the floor, and then on the left hand side of the chat box, you'll see something has been printed. This is what we're going to be working on today. Open your code back up, and now we're going to break it down line by line and figure out what's going on. First thing you'll see is the word server, followed by a left curly bracket. Curly brackets in Expression Advanced 2, like many coding languages, mean we're going to be running code between these brackets. Although the client will see the print in the chat, they are not technically running this code, the server is running it. This means that because the server is running it, all clients will get the same output. If we run this on the client, all clients are not synchronized, so all clients may see changes. Never use client-side code if you want all clients to have the same synchronized results. Next, we have a line that says string welcome equals hello. Notice there's two quotation marks around the word hello. This means we're treating it as a string. Now, for those who don't know what a string is, a string is characters that we're going to be treating as text. Think about it as um, the writing out the keyboard, plain text, that's it. Now, because this is going to be treated as plain text, not only do we need the two quotation marks, we also need the word string in front of our variable name. In this case, our variable name is called welcome. Now, for the quick and simple version, all we're doing, making a variable called welcome, which Later on, we could call back and get the value of, which is going to have the value of hello, which because it's a string, which it says at the beginning, we need quotation marks. There are many different kinds of variables you can use. You can use integers for math. You can use booleans or bools as they're called here. They are for true and false. Think of them as a one or a zero, nothing else. We can have tables which hold many different values. We won't be using them just yet. And of course, you can have strings, which as we used here, they are for containing just raw text in a variable. The next line we have is string welcome to equals quotation marks world. Exactly the same as the first line, just, just makes another variable called welcome to, which has the value of world with an exclamation point. Now we have the print function. This will print out text into your chat box, regardless if you run it uh, server side or client side. If we just wrote, for example, print quotation mark, hello world, quotation mark, then it would just print out hello world into your chat box. Amazing, really. What we did, though, was split that phrase up into two different variables. So we need to write something slightly different. If we just wrote print welcome, uh, no quotation marks, just a variable name of welcome, then it will look at that variable we made. It's a string. OK, so we can print it. What was welcome's value? OK, welcome's value was hello. So it will only print out hello. Because we have a plus sign after it, means we're going to take that string, take another string, put them together, and we have quotation mark, space, quotation mark. All that does is insert a space. After that, we have another plus and welcome to. Now, welcome to, as we know, is our other variable we need. And that one says world with an exclamation mark. As you can probably imagine, it takes hello, space, world, exclamation mark, that's our full string, and that's what we'll print, because that's what's between the two brackets. Now all we have to do is close off the original curly bracket from line one with a closing curly bracket, and voila, we now have a working hello world script running from our chip. We paste it down, again, it will say hello world in chat, fantastic. Now if you look at this code, there's something wrong with it here. I'm not going to say what. If you want to try and work it out for yourself, pause the video here. I will, of course, explain what is wrong with this in a second, but for yourself, if you want to try and work it out, pause it now. The actual problem with this is on line four, we have number equals eight times three. Seems sound in concept, but we didn't actually say what number is. We didn't say if it was a string, integer, boolean. Now, of course, it should actually be an integer because 8 times 3 is a mathematical formula, you can't do math on a string. Also, if you click validate at the bottom, this is the debug text you'll get. 
variable number does not exist at line four, character 10. Now to figure out what that means is go to line four. Line four obviously says number equals eight times three. Now it's saying that number does not exist, which it doesn't because it's looking for a type, then variable name, then what it equals. Now we've got variable name, which is number, but we have no type. That is what the error means. So simply type in the word int at the beginning of number to say we want this to be an integer, and that is it. It will print out my age is eight times three, but because we're doing math and we're not doing a string, eight times three is of course 24. All right, I hope you enjoyed part two. Uh, of course, this is just going over the absolute basics of variables and some of the syntax. Part three is going to be on some of the client side stuff, and we're also going to be working with events. Now, for people who don't know what events are, they're a lot like hooks in Lua. And if you don't know what that is, think of it as when something happens, run this code, and it'll do that automatically. That's it for me now, and I will see you in part three.